Hey there, card folk. Speed Robo here. And today's going to be another non scripted video. This is probably going to be the general format of the videos that I put together, um, as they just take less time and I don't have as much time to really put all the bells and whistles on. You know. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, sorry about my voice. Uh, still a little sick today. Uh, had the flu. Been recovering, but now. Now we're back, and just on time, too, because I've got something to talk about, you know, that uh, I think is pretty important to talk about today, and the topic, as you saw from the video name and the thumb title, is the Bushi Road Cycle. So, I recently put out a tweet about the Bushi Road Cycle, it was a comment on the Price of Deer Days, and it's gotten a lot of feedback, and on Twitter... You can't really put in everything you want to say. You can't really put in the nuance. It's not, it's not the place for that. It's not the place for nuance. But here in this video, I have some more, like, smaller specific thoughts that I want to share. And I want to address some of the comments and feedback my tweet has gotten. Um, I haven't really addressed those on Twitter because, again, it's not really, like, the place for nuance and discussion. So we're going to... We're going to talk about a lot of that here. So to give a little bit of context and a little bit of background, I came up with the Bushi Road cycle, um, which is this theory of how Bushi Road runs their company, runs their games, and specifically runs Cardfight Vanguard. And I came up with this all the way back in, let me just, I'm going to check a few things in real time. This was, like, I came up with this back when um, we saw Majesty Lord blaster get revealed for uh v-series uh so when did that come out uh no it was 2020 okay so it was it was may 2020 that uh we saw this thing come out and dude i saw majesty lord blaster and i was like oh crap it's happening again and now what do you mean by speed robo what do you mean by oh crap it's happening again well <laughs> um so, as you can see on my chart that I made, Bushiroad Games, and Bushiroad runs their games in a cycle. And this cycle was first seen with uh, Vanguard G, to be specific, right? The first game they really tried it out with, and it worked. So, you know by the end of G... The power creep was so insane, and, like, the greed and the product design was so insane that you were, like, having to buy entire cases to get Gize. You had to buy, like, an entirely new deck every time a set dropped if you wanted to stay competitive at all, right? That kind of stuff. Like, and that's not really a deniable argument in late G. Like, it was it was absolutely that bad. And uh, with Majesty Lord Blaster and V, I was like, holy crap, this, yeah, the, the power creep's that bad, it's happening again. Like, just like it says on the cycle, Bushiroad will make a good game, do consumer-friendly stuff to lure people in, um, then, you know, slowly power creep it, turn up the heat slowly and slowly and slowly, and as people start to get tired and leave of that, as soon as they start seeing people leave, they crank that dial to 11, and they really go fast, and they just go... Yep, no, you gotta buy, 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 buy. Because once they see people starting to trickle off, they know that that's their core audience leaving. And their core audience is gonna stick with them no matter what. No matter, no matter what. And we can actually see this um, with the pricing of Deer Days, right? There's a lot of people that are like, oh, I spend that much, like, every month on Vanguard cards. This isn't that bad. Or... Oh, I spend, you know, $60 a month on Vanguard Zero. This isn't that bad. Or, oh man, that's like the price of one deck in Vanguard. Yeah, whatever, that price is right. Like, that's that's their core audience who's going to buy it anyway. Who's going who's gonna to find some way to justify it no matter what happens. No matter what, Vanguard has a large enough core audience that it's not going to go anywhere and it's going to completely sustain itself. But there's going to hit a point where the money has been extracted to such a degree that it is, there's nowhere to go, right? 
And this is what we saw at the end of G and at the end of V. We've seen this before where there was nowhere to go. And so their plan is to apologize and reboot and just do it again. And we've seen this happen twice already. It's already happened twice. And if you look at how long each series lasts, like, okay, you look at the original series, right? That lasted from 2011 to around 2015. Okay, so that was four years. Uh, G, which you could argue is a soft reboot. I do argue is a soft... I, like, I, G is a soft reboot, right? G lasted about three years, from 2015 to 2018. V was three years from 2018 to 2021. And we're, like, getting kind of close for Overdress being three years. And so if I had to call my shot, Overdress is going to be three years. Because, again, the stuff is consistent. We're seeing it over and over and over. And that's my point. That's my point with the Bushi Road cycle is that this is consistently happening. Um, <laughs> you can you could even, to some extent, say that it happened with Buddy Fight. But instead of it being a reboot, they just canceled the game. So <clears throat> hopefully that gives you a little bit of context as to where I'm coming from with the Bushi Road cycle. I was a little all over the place, sort of spitting out like my brain thoughts. Because again, this is not scripted, and I apologize for that. But to sort of zero in on the... Um, some of the comments and critiques I've been seeing, because I do want to address that um, on, on my post, is people have been saying that they can't reboot again. And if they did, it would kill the game. So I've heard that before. <laughs> That's <laughs> We're getting to the cycle again. I've literally heard that before. I heard that all at the end of V, before Overdress was revealed to be a reboot, I had people telling me, this was two years ago, I had people telling me, if they reboot, it will kill the game. Look what happened. Vanguard's fine. Look, this is, this is what I'm saying. Vanguard is fine, guys. Vanguard's gonna be completely fine. It's not going anywhere. It's too big to fail. Its core audience is too big for the game to fail now. It's not going anywhere. Vanguard's fine. It can reboot again. No problem. No doubt in my mind. There's there. I do not have a sliver of doubt in my mind that if they reboot it again, in the next year or year and a half, that the game would be, the, the, it would be completely fine. It would be 100% okay. All right? No doubt. Absolutely no doubt. We've done this twice. Why wouldn't it happen a third time? Literally, why? Why would it not happen again? It, 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 there's no reason why it wouldn't. Zero reason. Zero. Yeah, sure, maybe... Maybe some people would leave, but new people would fill that space, right? Absolutely, no doubt. And the part of the reason why I know new people would fill that space is that I've seen people who are like, oh, I got started in Overdress, or I got started in V and then stuck around for Overdress because it was their first reboot. It was their first time through their cycle. The people who aren't sticking around are the people who've already been taken for the ride twice. Those are the people who aren't sticking around. Right? Like, that's it. That's what's going on. Um, I saw somebody say that uh, the game had no nostalgia factor. That's completely false. Uh, with 10 years of consistent content like this, Cardfight Vanguard has a huge nostalgia factor to a ton of people. That's completely untrue. Um, but now on to the comment that I really wanted to bring up, because this one, this one stuck out to me. Um, and this is from, like, I want to highlight this one specifically, because a lot of people have been saying, like, oh, it can't reboot, blah, 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 right? Like, but this one specifically stood out to me, and I was like, wait a second. 
Um, and this is from Vices, uh, VT, and I want to say thank you for uh, your comments. Thank you for your discussion. I really appreciate it. Uh, this is by no means a call-out post. This is by no means me calling you out. Like, do not... If anyone watching this, do not harass them. Do not engage. This is just something that came up that I wanted to talk about that Twitter did not give me the nuance to discuss. Uh, Vices, also in general, looking at your post, you seem like an awesome person. This is not me attacking you. This is not me being mean to you. This this is just, I just want to... You, you shared words, and I want to share talk about those words that's it all right cool cool <clears throat> so here's a tweet however overdress was in the planning stages as early as 2017 statements on kidani's blog dated october 2017 imply this much v was essentially filler the d infrastructure and design remained under development v was always going to rotate out eventually d should plan to stay okay so, let's go ahead and assume that this is true. Well, I'll, I'll loop back to the assume. I want to make it clear, I'm not calling Vices a liar at all. Not even a little bit, okay? But let's just, let's assume everything here is completely true. V was, and, and Overdress was in development since 2017, and V was literally designed to be filler, that is so much worse. Like, oh my god. That, like, let's think about, let's think about the implications of this. That Bushiroad knew they were going to reboot G and knew that they wanted Overdress to be, shall we say, the real reboot? Cool. Okay. So what did they do? While for the, the two to three years, while they work on Overdress, they reboot the game before the real reboot, telling everybody, hey, that, that, that collection that you built up, okay, you no longer can play that in standard. We've got a new format that's completely jank, completely jank, and like we don't care about and we don't really support. I mean, the premium collections during V were abysmal like we can all they they were terrible like the power creep in that was insane the cards that came out in that just shattered the format to pieces there is no denying that like different fight even different fight like the the biggest the biggest apologetics for bushiroad guy has a video about that right like you there's no there's no argument that bushiroad did not care about premium during v right so so they're just like okay let's let's release this basically tell everybody hey your collection just set them on fire this is a reboot and then they don't tell anybody that they're going that they have a plan a built-in plan to reboot again in three years and they push all this product that they know is going to be completely invalidated in less than half a decade on distributors, stores, and players. And right up until the announcement of Overdress, they're denying that it's another reboot. I could not imagine worse optics. Like, if that is true, V, I'm sorry, but V is just, like, pure evil at that point. Like, I, what, wow, holy cow. And then they're just like, yeah, and then this 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 stopgap product that we released is going to be a third format because we can totally run three formats competently. Absolutely. And they're, we're going to support it about as well as we supported premium during V-Series, which is to say, basically not at all, <laughs> right? Like, I... <clears throat> so So back to me... Assuming that, it's, back to me saying, assuming it's true. I don't actually believe that this is true. I believe everything Vice has said. I completely believe Vice is. But I don't believe that it's true. And and let, let's say what I, what I mean by that. First off, I have not researched this blog. I've not looked into it. Partially because 
there there is a part of me inside that does not want this to be true because I still want to believe in in Bushi Road just a little bit. I want to believe they are not this terrible. I want to believe. I really want to believe that. And secondly, um, as stated on, in this tweet, statements from the blog imply that it's in development. It, it doesn't, there's no explicit statement. It's just reading into this implication. Um, so as somebody who has worked on many different games, um, as many, many different roles in many different games, um, I will tell you without a shadow of a doubt that uh, doing a product like Overdress absolutely does not take four years of development time. Um, no, <laughs> no, absolutely not. I, there's no, no, there's no way. Um, it does not take that long. It would not take that long to put together uh, Overdress because ultimately Overdress is just Cardfight Vanguard um, with some tweaks, right? It's just it's just Cardfight Vanguard but tweaked. That does not take four years of development time. Absolutely not. Um, I do not believe that for a, a second of a doubt. And also looking at the Overdress product that we have gotten, that's uh, that's not four years of dev time. It's just not. Like, n No. No, there's no way. Absolutely not. I don't believe that for a second. Um, so I don't think that this is true. I want to believe it's not true. And I hope to the heavens above that it's not true. Because, like, wow. Like, if they... Man. Like, if this, if this is true and this got out, I cannot imagine how furious stores sitting on unsold v product would be i've like oh man oh man that's wow Whew. so uh there's that <laughs> um and that was that was the gist of of what i wanted to talk about like this is bushi road's game plan and I don't fault them for it. I really don't. I do not fault them for it. Because it works. It makes them money. Like, it's a, objectively a good business plan. It keeps working. They keep making money. Like, Deer Days is going to make them so much money. Like, it's crazy. And um, that actually brings me to talking a little bit more about Deer Days. And because uh, I do. And this, this actually relates to the Bushi Road cycle in more ways than one. Like, Deer Days, the pricing on Deer Days helps indicate what spot we're at on the Bushi Road cycle. We're at the extraction spot. Um, we hit there kind of early, and I think that we're going to be in for a long, like, extraction period in Cardfight Vanguard. I really do. Um, it's pretty obvious Bushi Road has given up on expanding the game to new people. They're past that. We're at just milk the core audience at this point. Like, the the product quality going down drastically, the um, how events have been run, you can read the horror stories on Twitter yourself, and just the overall pricing structure of Vanguard. Like, we're clearly at, at the extraction point. And Deer Day's $140 price tag is pure evidence of that. That's just the way it is. Um... But Deer Days is also indicative of something else. Uh, Bushiroad has been has been applying the cycle model to basically all of their products, and their digital games are no exception. Vanguard Zero is near the end. It's real close, and I've been saying this from the beginning when it comes to Zero. I've been saying this from the start. What's the plan for Vanguard Zero when G is done? And I will I will tell you what the plan is. There is no plan. Reboot is the plan. Deer Days is that reboot. Look look at it, right? It all lines up. This why is Deer Days so like 
zero is almost at the end of G. It's like, it's inches away. And Dear Days is coming out, like, at the same time. Okay, and there's a few things that's different about Dear Days than Furio's other game projects, and you already know what they are. Number one, this is coming out all over the world, not just in Japan. That's different. And number two, this is getting DLC updates. That's right. It's going to be staying, well, not current with the physical game, but, like, it's getting updated, right? Dear Days is the reboot of Zero. It's there so that their core audience has a place to go and spend more money. That's what it's for. <laughs> like, <clears throat> there is no there there is no plan for Zero after G. It's just it's gonna get rebooted and it's gonna be Dear Days. Um, that's that's my God, I was like literally what else could it be right? Why and like the the. Oh, everything just lines up too perfectly with this thing. Like, this is just... It's part of the Boucher Red Cycle, man. It just is. And people are already saying, Oh, I'd rather spend 140 for Deer Days and get everything than, you know, my 60 to 50 a month on Zero. Which, like, my God, if you're spending 60 to 50 a month on Zero, like, holy... That game's predatory, dude. Like, it just is. So, um... I think that was about everything. Yeah. That's about everything I wanted to say. Um, I just want I just want Bushiro to do better, man. I really do. That's that's the takeaway from this. Cause like, holy cow, it's not it's not good. And the only way that we're gonna be able to get them to do better is if we just keep screaming. That's it. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed. Hope you have a wonderful day. I'll, I'll do videos um, somewhat regularly now. I'm going to try them for somewhat regularly, maybe once a month. So, subscribe, follow that. And if you want to see uh, what I've been doing recently, what, what I've been working on in my professional career, um, link to my Kickstarter. It's going to be down in the description. 20% uh, of the profit gets donated to charities helping out the folks in ukraine because uh lord knows they need it and uh, i've been speed robo and i'll see you next time goodbye